Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Belko Experiment. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens up in Bogota, Colombia, where a foreign employee of Belko Industries, Mike, is driving towards his work office. Along the way, a local sells a lucky charm to Mike, but he refuses and continues to drive. Meanwhile, in the Belko Industries office building located in an isolated field, there is a heavy line of cars outside. It appears that there are unfamiliar heavily armed soldiers that are checking the employee's identity at the gate. One of the foreign employees, Barry, questions the soldiers, but they simply ignore his bullshit. He notices that they are telling the local employees to go back home. The employees eventually enter the Belco Industries office building. It is then revealed that there are people surveilling the employees from an unknown place. Inside the office building, a new employee named Newbie reports her first day. She reports that she already went to the doctor to have a tracer implanted in her body. It turns out it's required to have a tracer to be implanted in the employees of Belco Industries. The older employee explains that the tracers are used to locate them in case they got kidnapped in Colombia. Later, a creepy employee named Creep keeps staring at Mike's girlfriend named Andra. She notices Creep staring at her, so she closes the blinds of the window. Mike arrives and he gives her a smelly kiss. Mike checks out the employees and notices that most of the company employees are gone. He asks his friend, who reveals that the heavily armed soldiers sent the local employees back home. He takes a look out the window, only to see an armed soldier entering the hangar. He calls the company security guard, who also has no idea about the heavily armed soldiers outside. Out of nowhere, a voice speaks on the intercom and announces that there are 80 of them inside the company building. The mysterious voice instructs them that they need to kill two of them inside within 30 minutes, and if they fail to follow the instruction, they will face repercussions. The employees simply laugh it out, thinking that there is someone pranking them. A few moments later, massive and strong metal doors surround the entire building, preventing anyone from going out of the building. In response, the employees gather up to figure out what is happening. The pike takes out their torch, and they attempt to burn and melt the metal. To their disappointment, the metal is too strong and too thick to be melted. Barry, who is the highest official in the company at that moment, explains to the employees the metal gates are part of the building structure and protection in case of a military event. He then tells everyone to calm their muscles down, since someone might discover the metal gates and tries to make fun of them. Mike discovers that the metal gates also prevent cell reception. He warns Barry that the voice in the intercom is not pranking them. Some of the employees go to the rooftop and they call the military's attention outside to report that they are stuck inside. But the military soldier ignores them. As the 30-minute deadline is over, some employees drop dead to the floor one after the other, while loud bang sounds surround the building. The employees think that someone is shooting at them, prompting them to hide in cover. After some of them drop dead to the floor, Barry checks the corpses of the employees who died. He notices that the dead employees did not die from bullet wounds. Instead, their heads explode from the inside, causing their death. At that moment, they realize the tracers implanted in their bodies make the employees' heads explode. The old pipe man gives a medal to the panicking young pipe man for their self-defense. Mike immediately gets a sharp cutter and locks himself in the bathroom, trying to take out the tracer behind his head. The voice in the intercom warns him to stop taking out the tracer, or it will explode instantly, forcing him to keep it inside his head. The other employees check the bathroom, only to find cameras hidden everywhere, implying that someone is surveilling them. Meanwhile, the head security guard is devastated to find his friend dead. Barry approaches him, asking for the key to the weapon armory of the security guards. It seems that Barry wants to hold off the weapons, to keep himself safe from the other employees, but the head guard refuses to give it to him. Despite the chaos, Newbie hides in the basement, where the two pipe men check the malfunctioning aircon. The young pipe man is obviously panicking, thinking that they are being pushed to kill each other inside the building. The old man keeps telling him to calm down as they are trying to fix the aircon. The voice in the intercom speaks again, and it tells them that they must not remove any tag, nor remove the surveillance camera, and that those who go against the rules will instantly drop dead without any warning. After that, the voice instructs them to kill 30 of them in the building. If they fail to kill 30 people in 2 hours, 60 people will drop dead. Everyone goes hysterical, knowing that the voice in the intercom is not pranking them. Some of them immediately get knives and any kind of weapons to protect their vulnerable muscles. The young pipeman loses his sanity, and he accidentally smashes the old man's head using the metal tool, leading to his death. After that, he notices Newbie hiding in the corner. He then grabs her sexy body since she witnesses the scene. 
As she tries to run her sexy body away, he tries to end her sexy life. But she pushes him away, causing him to get stabbed by a metal in the wall, leading to his death instead. Upstairs, the employees are discussing the possible ways to survive. Barry tries to convince them that they need to sacrifice the lives of 30 people to save more lives. But Mike insists they do not have any right to take anyone's life, regardless of the situation. Anver suggests they can put up a banner on the rooftop to ask for help. The employees then start working to create a big banner. Barry, Creep, and the big guy create a group together. Barry manipulates Mike's friend to join them by telling him that he needs to live for his family. On the other side, the smoker employee figures out that the water has psychotics, which makes them hysterical, so he prevents anyone from drinking the water. Mike, Andra, and the head guard get to paint big clothing to create the banner. Mike notices that the blowtorch is gone, so he searches for it, but finds out that Barry and his group are using it to open up the weapon armory. Mike tells them that it is not a good idea to get out the guns, since it will probably allow them to kill each other. Barry replies he does not care about Mike's opinion. The head guard then loses it, and he points a gun at Barry to stop them from taking out the gun. Mike calms down the head guard, and he grabs the gun from him. He then shoots at the blowtorch to prevent Barry from opening the weapon armory. Later, Andra warns Mike not to go against Barry and his group, since they might retaliate against him. She tells him that his moral standpoint does not matter at this moment, since humans are inherently out to defend themselves to survive. Mike and the other employee go to the rooftop and try to hang the banner. The military on the ground shoots at the banner to take it down. Just then, the voice in the intercom warns them that if they put another banner again, their lives will abruptly end. Mike, Andra, and the head guard go inside the building. Mike tells Andra that they are deliberately sent to the isolated office to be in that kind of human experiment. He realizes their job does not make any sense. After that, the three decide to walk downstairs. Along the way, Barry and his group ambush them. Barry smashes Mike's head, knocking him out. Creep asks for the weapon armory key from the head guard, but he throws it downstairs, and Creep stabs him, leading to his eventual death. Barry and his group come to the weapon armory to get the guns. They then gather everyone in the building lobby, where they will choose who will be killed using Barry's category. He makes the old people and the people who do not have a child line up in the wall, including Mike and Andra, until they reach 30. Those who try to resist are instantly shot to death. After that, Barry and his group mercilessly shoot the 30 people lined up in the wall one after the other. The buildings are full of screams, as the people lined up in the wall drop dead. Newbie in the basement hears the shootings, but she decides to turn off the building lights before Barry and his group finish killing 30 people. As everything turns dark, the survivors and the other employees manage to run away. Barry and his group then randomly shoot at anyone. The big guy from Barry's group is caught by the other employees, and they group up to kill him. Barry tells Creep and Mike's friend to stop counting and just kill anyone they see. The voice on the intercom announces that they have already killed 29 people and they need to kill one more, otherwise another 30 chosen people will die. Barry and his group desperately hunt for one more victim to kill, in fear that they will belong to the next 30 people who will die. Mike's friend finds Andra hiding under the table. To defend her sexy body, Andra smashes the foot and hand of Mike's friend, causing him to drop his gun to the floor. He begs Andra not to waste any bullet on his petty life, since he only follows Barry's instructions. So Andra chooses not to kill him. Because of that, the voice in the intercom announces that since they have failed to kill 30 people within two hours, 30 more people will die. Just then, the tracers begin to explode one after the other, causing 30 more people to drop dead. After that, the voice in the intercom announces the next rule in the game. It tells them that whoever reaches the most amount of kills will be allowed to survive the game. At that point, Barry is leading with 11 kills, Creep has 7 kills, and the two other employees have one kill each. The last instruction prompts the remaining employees to kill whoever they see, turning the scene into a bloodbath. Barry finds his assistant walking to him. The assistant begs him to spare her shitty life by offering her sexy body to him. But Barry still chooses to shoot her dead, rather than take her body. Newbie and the other guy are hiding together above the elevator. Barry rides the elevator, and the other is crushed to death by the running elevator, while Newbie manages to jump to safety. Andra finds the smoker guy and another employee collecting explosives from the dead body's heads. They are planning to create an explosive to open up the metal gates. Andra proceeds to come to the intercom inside the building. She uses the intercom to tell Mike her current location, and she asks him to come to her. She then encounters Creep butchering a dead body on the ground. She points the gun at him, but she hits his hand, making him drop to the floor. In response, he shoots back at them. He gets the smoker guy and his friend, causing them to die. 
She manages to get an axe and smashes his ugly face till his death. Mike and his girlfriend eventually reunite on the ground floor. At this point, there are only six of them alive in the building. One of the remaining people throws an improvised Molotov to the ground floor, killing the cafeteria lady. Barry finds Mike and his girlfriend on the staircase, and he starts shooting at them. He manages to shoot Andra while the two are running away. Barry finds the Molotov guy, and he instantly shoots him to death. Now, Barry, Mike, Andra, and Newbie are the remaining people in the building. Barry continues to hunt them down as he desperately wants to survive, while the other three keep hiding as they do not have any intentions to kill anyone. Andra cannot take the bullet wounds, and she says that she loves Mike with her dying breath. Mike notices that Barry is approaching their hiding place. At this point, Mike is angry about his girlfriend's death. He rushes into the dark room, and Barry keeps shooting at him. He then jumps from behind, allowing him to push Barry to the floor. They then get into a fist fight and muscle wrestling, where the two men exchange punches, rather than hormones. Barry crawls in an attempt to get his gun back. Mike grabs Barry back and locks Barry's head using his head. He then grabs the tape dispenser on the floor and smashes Barry's head repeatedly until Barry dies, which marks his first kill. Now Mike and Newbie are the remaining people in the building. As the time is over, Mike becomes the winner of the game, and he's allowed to survive while Newbie's life is ended. The military soldiers drag Mike to the hangar where the surveillance is taking place. There, the experiment head asks Mike questions about his emotions. He introduces himself as a part of an organization of social scientists and tells Mike that the game is an experiment to allow social scientists to figure out more about human behavior. Out of rage, Mike fights against the soldier. As he manages to get a rifle, he relentlessly shoots the experiment head's face. In the end, it is revealed that there are hundreds of the same experiments taking place, as the movie fades out with the faces of the survivors of the experiments. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.